Vicky Ty, and today we are talking about Art Block! Yay! Everyone's Boo. favorite topic. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> no one likes Art Block. <laughs> okay, I have a question for you, Anisha. Okay, yeah. What does Art Block look like for you? Um, so I feel like there are two types of Art Blocks, at least the ones that I yeah. experience. Like one could be where I'm just like, you are in a creative rut where you don't mm -hmm. feel like you have any idea what to draw mm -hmm. or yeah you, have, you basically have run out of inspiration and the other kind of art blog is the one where you get where you um your hands don't do what you want them to do <laughs> 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 where you're just completely frustrated by your drawing skills and like, okay every time i'm making a drawing it's just not working out you have like a waste paper basket that's just like full of crumpled drawings and <laughs> so I have experienced both many many times um mm -hmm. I feel like currently I'm going through one um of the inspiration variety where like yes. I feel like everything that I've been drawing lately just feels the same um mm -hmm. I've definitely got myself into like a very comfortable position of like I know what I like to draw uh because mm -hmm. it's easy um, but that also means that, like, I'm not really growing. Um, mm -hmm. And so I know I have to push myself to, like, get out of there and uh, um, try new things. But it's hard. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to. Right. <laughs> <laughs> totally understandable. Yeah. This is always hard. I think you're, like, at this point right now where you know that you want to expand, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you want to do more. But... You're, you're still in that comfort zone where you're, like, used to doing a certain thing, and it's, like, hard to implement change. And so mm -hmm. you're, like, trying, you're, like, clawing <laughs> bit by bit, <laughs> but it feels like it's taking forever. But, like, you're getting somewhere. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. exactly. What about for you, Vicky? I would say that mine is actually really similar to what you described. There is sort of, like, those two different types mm -hmm. of art block almost, and, um... I feel like recently the one I had been going through was of the why don't my hands work oh, properly kind of variety. Okay. Yeah, which is always a really frustrating place to be in because you're like, oh, okay, did I just suddenly forget how to do like <laughs> anything? That's really nice. I'm really happy about that. But what I have found works, and this works time and time again for either art block, is to just power through it. Mm -hmm. That's just what works for me. Yeah. What about you? Okay, so that is kind of like an argument I do want to get into. Because um, I feel like you could go either way where like you could either take a break. And I feel like this is kind of important. Like, okay, for me personally, I feel like whenever I do get into an art block, then first things first, I feel like you should just step away from the drawing pad and go for a walk. Or like just mm -hmm. do something that's not art. Just like... Mm -hmm. Because I feel like sometimes, especially when, like, you've just been drawing and drawing and drawing, eventually you're just kind of, like, all your creative ju creative juices have run out. You've mm -hmm. used them all up. You drank them all up. So you got to, like, <laughs> ref you got to recharge your batteries, in a sense. And I feel a metaphor today. You, um, and just I'm take liking a it, yeah. <laughs> I feel like my dad. Uh, and try to do something new. So whether that be, um, like maybe socialize with your pals or mm -hmm. um, try to find inspiration in other places like watching movies or reading books mm -hmm. and then eventually um, hopefully like if you've done that first part like you might um, be like okay I've, I've recharged my batteries this should be enough for me to pick up a pen and start drawing again if mm -hmm. that doesn't work then you have to force yourself to do it mm, okay no, I, I really like what you said, and perhaps I had oversimplified my answer a bit, because I, I completely agree with everything mm -hmm. that you had just mentioned, mm -hmm. and I do find that when I take a break initially, and either, like, spend time consuming different types of media, I think that's really important, because it's like, yeah, it's good to get inspired by other artwork, but there's something about stepping outside of that and like you said watching movies listening to music like looking at magazines mm -hmm. or like I don't know going out in nature and stuff like that, like talking with other people learning other people's stories there's something about that that just gets you out of your own head mm -hmm. for that moment and to like see things from a different perspective and I think that can really instigate a different way of approaching 
things when you like sit down to make artwork. Mm -hmm. So I do think that's really important. And that has worked in the past, really. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that I did that recently as well, where I just like started watching, you know, a movie or started watching a new TV show. And like, that just gave me new ideas. Like I felt almost motivated to try making my stories or like approaching stories in a new way mm -hmm. rather than just like sitting down to draw like the same character over and over again mm -hmm. yeah yeah definitely and I do feel that like um <laughs> <laughs> we're like having art block right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my god okay wait sorry can you rewind like can you say what you just said yes so taking inspiration from outside sources that are not necessarily artwork, taking a break from making artwork. Okay, Something okay, I'm, I'm back on the train. I'm Jog your memory, train. okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, so I wanted to make the point where, like, I think we just discussed this a little bit in our work-life episode. Uh, you have to make some kind of balance between the work you create. And, and it's especially important because a lot of your artwork creativity stems from yourself. Yes. And, like, if you spend all your time you know drawing and drawing and drawing and just like creating making your little in your little drawing cave and you don't really have like a like that life outside you kind of miss uh -huh. out on all of these connections and sources of inspiration and just like because a lot of your inspiration is supposed to come from your outside interactions and your life so uh taking breaks is definitely important so like sometimes that it's necessary to go out and do those things you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh my god yeah there was this artist who had created this comic just about that exactly like living your life and just like having experiences you know mm -hmm. to I don't know like make artwork from and just like the importance of that I don't remember the artist's name unfortunately but I think it's a pretty like general kind of statement or like sentiment mm -hmm. when it comes to creating things it's like first and foremost you have to live your life mm -hmm. You know, you can't oh, yeah. just expect yourself to constantly create from nothing. It just, mm -hmm. it's not lasting and it, like, you can only go so far, essentially. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, I think in, if we're talking about um, trying to force, like, once you get to that stage where, like, okay, taking a break is not, not doing anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to force myself to do it. Then, because, mm -hmm. like... The thing is also, you shouldn't be waiting for inspiration to strike. True, true. Uh, you got to go out there and try to find it. Um, mm -hmm. So what are some things that you do to try to find that inspiration? I think my go-to has always been image boards. Mm -hmm. So Like I physical think, image boards? Um, mainly through the internet. Okay. I think... The first one that I had started, well, this was, like, back in the days before, like, I knew about social media. I would essentially just, like, find pictures on the internet, have a little desktop folder, and just, like, save them to my desktop and just, like, rifle through them, you know, whenever I needed some ideas or anything like that. And, like, now there are plenty more convenient options where you can have, like, a Tumblr blog of inspiration or, like, a Pinterest board or just, like, plenty of other things. I don't know, Google Drive, whatever the hell. Mm -hmm. um, but those are really convenient and, like, really nice to just, like, rifle through and uh, just, like, find new ideas whenever you're sitting down to make artwork. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I've adopted recently, but I found that it's been very, very helpful. So you know how, like, often you'll be, like, on the internet or you'll be out or something like that, and you'll see something that will, like, strike inspiration in you, and you'll think, like, ooh, like, that would make a really cool art piece mm -hmm. or something like that. Or, like, oh, I really want to draw that. But then you don't, like, put it down. You don't, like, yeah. put it to paper. <laughs> so you just, like, forget about it. Mm -hmm. And, like, that idea is just, like, gone. And I'm not saying that, like, you have to, like, capitalize on every single idea that you have. That's definitely not necessary and also impossible. But if you have an idea of something that you really like and you really want to do, then just like write it down really quick, mm -hmm. like jot it down or like do it like a really quick sketch. And I really like doing that because when I do go to make like fuller art pieces, then I already have like this entire log of like art mm -hmm. ideas yeah, to yeah. draw from. And it's like, oh my God, this is so convenient. Like I've already done all the hard work for myself, <laughs> like coming up with the idea. Like this is, this is excellent. Yeah. I know it's the thing that writers do where like they'll keep like, um, 
a pad of paper like on their bedside uh, table yeah. so like when they wake up in the middle of the night like ah peanut butter and they just quickly write it down <laughs> but then you wake Wait. up in the morning and you think huh what, what, what does this mean do i need to go buy more like what? <laughs> oh. peanut butter. Uh, but yeah that is definitely if you want to make life a bit more convenient for yourself in that aspect then carrying a sketchbook around with you is super helpful because mm-hmm. you never know when you're gonna see that thing like i don't know a guy who is uh juggling outside or something <laughs> and you That's think like guy. oh that would make a really good drawing and then guess what you got your sketchbook right with you and you can start drawing that yeah and i think all of this sort of points to the idea of just like getting things down mm-hmm. right like just doing it yeah and it's like a lot of the times we ask ourselves and we like psych it up in our minds. Like, Ooh, is that, that the garbage truck? truck? <laughs> well, that is the garbage truck. You can hear it. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Sorry. My- yeah. yeah. So like, sure. it's also that, have you ever like sat down to focus on drawing something or it's like <laughs> you spend like your entire day like, oh, I can't wait to draw. I'm so excited to draw. And mm-hmm. then as soon as you get home and you sit down <laughs> at your table, it's like, oh yeah, I don't feel like drawing anymore. <laughs> I hate I hate when that happens yeah. so it's so frustrating mm-hmm. or like okay a few hours later you go to bed and like middle of the night you're like huh I want to draw oh my god oh I'm like upset mm-hmm. it's yeah it's the absolute worst so that's like another way that like having a sketchbook with you around is pretty handy um, I agree I agree because like yeah you don't always get that feeling of like ah, oh, I want to draw like really badly right now um and sometimes you're just not at your desk, so mm-hmm. you, you just, you gotta do it. You gotta get that sketchbook. With- That's right. Okay, yeah, I remember what we were talking about now. Just, like, the importance of doing it, essentially. Yes. For, okay, so, like, a lot of times in our heads, we'll be like, oh, how am I going to do this? When can I do it? Mm-hmm. Like, all these types of questions, like, will it look good? And it's like, okay, but most importantly is that you actually, like, do the thing first mm-hmm. before yeah. asking any of those questions because mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, those yeah. aren't relevant until something is on the paper that is true oh that right. garbage right. truck is really it's you know it's he's trying his best garbage. yeah and there's a lot going on oh oh i think they might be done okay or right. they're like okay, <laughs> he's rolling out he's rolling out it just it's, it just creates a very immersive experience for the listener because now they, too, feel like they're garbage. Like us. <laughs> Did you just drag all <laughs> It's, okay, we're it's what they deserve. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. We love you guys. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, I think it's gone. Um, we can get back into mm-hmm. our conversation. Yeah. Oh, boy. Um, okay, so one of the things that I did want to talk about was... Um, how art block is part of the great circle of creativity. Mm. So I feel like it is very cyclical where you are going to have moments where you have very high creativity and you're just like, I want to draw everything in the world ever. And like everything you make is pure gold (laughs) and it's amazing. And you're just like, it's, it's amazing. And then eventually you kind of like get off of that sugar high and then you're just at that stage where you hate everything and you don't want to draw anymore. But then you know what? It's a cycle. You're going to get back up there again. (laughs) You just got to push through a little bit. It's true. It's true. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the times we ask a lot of ourselves and expect ourselves to be 100% all the time and Mm -hmm. if we're not 100% then we think that something is wrong with us Mm -hmm. but I think it's much more common and much more natural that life exists on waves and that we will have highs and lows as you said and that Mm -hmm. those things are completely normal and as long as we expect them and accept them Mm -hmm. then we can continue moving forward Mm -hmm. that's true that's true hi Um, There's like this chart that I've seen around, which probably you have as well. And so this Mm -hmm. was made by um, uh, Sam Gushu. Um, Mm -hmm. 
teacup underscore art on Twitter. And so yes. it's really cool. I'm, I'm pretty sure you might have seen this around before, but it's basically showing these two lines. You're going to have your evaluation skills and your mm -hmm. creativity, like your output skills. So mm -hmm. basically, there are a lot of times when you're drawing where when you have like that art block stage where like you feel frustrated at everything you're drawing and it just feels like you're not progressing, you're feeling stagnant, that like mm -hmm. you're frustrated that the work that you're making is not matching the ideas in your head. So mm -hmm. this is part of that same cycle. So what happens is, is that sometimes you'll have those moments where like you feel like you've made the best painting ever, uh, but then eventually you get down into that low where the drawing is not turning out the way you want it to be but mm -hmm. that's actually a good thing because what's happening mm -hmm. is is that your skill at evaluation it's like your skill of critiquing art is actually better than your skill mm. at creating so what mm -hmm. it is is that like you can see all the mistakes you're making um but that's a good thing you know what i mean because like you have yeah, that ability yeah. to critique yourself and know what you're doing wrong and know that like how it can be improved eventually your creation skill is going to catch up to your evaluation skill and that's mm -hmm. when like when they're both at the same level then it's going to you're going to get back to normal and then eventually mm -hmm. your creating skill your evaluation skill is going to be low and you're going to think like oh i'm making the best thing ever but your critique skill is low mm -hmm. and then the cycle continues i don't right, know if i'm right. making much sense but like you have to look at this chart and i yeah. i'll <laughs> i'm explaining it really badly i'll post it on our twitter and maybe our Instagram so you guys can see. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, you get what I'm saying, Vicky? I do. I do. Um, yeah, I think you explained it well. And also, okay. I have seen that infograph before. Mm -hmm. or oh, fancy. Whatever. Um, just how, like, it supposes that as long as you continue to grow, then you will reach sort of, like, those plateaus where mm -hmm. you're, like, uh, sort of at war. <laughs> I think that's yes. too uh, dramatic. Where you're sort of, like... In, indecisive with yourself because um like like you said what you see in your mind is different from what you're actually producing and that's only a result of the fact that your brain has like grown faster than your physical skill is capable of matching up mm -hmm. to and that it's technically only a matter of time before those two sort of come together again mm -hmm. and then like as you grow again like that just keeps happening as you move upward mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You did it so much better than <laughs> <laughs> Spark Notes version. It's just the Spark Notes version. Thank but you. um yeah, I definitely feel like I've I've experienced this mm -hmm. multiple times. And you know what? I feel like I come into this every few months or so. Mm -hmm. I started to notice a pattern. Mm -hmm. Like on the dot, like every few months, I'm like, ooh, things are feeling a little weird with my art. It's like I'm not feeling satisfied with it. I feel like I need to change it up almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And typically when that happens, what I like to do is go switch mediums. So I'll like either work a lot in digital and then switch to traditional or vice versa. And I find that that um, the difference in the mediums really helps me to like process ideas in a new way and to just like uh, really change the way that I approach making artwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I what, what do you yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. That's actually what I'm doing right now where I've just I'm not in an art block per se, but like because I've just been constantly working for the past few months and haven't had time to like draw for myself, mm -hmm. I do feel like all the work that I'm making is kind of feeling a bit flat. So, right, right. I do feel that um switching things up is a really good idea. So, mm -hmm. I, I I have been painting recently and I do Ooh. I feel like it's it's helping me out a bit. Um, oh, tell us more. Yes. Oh, okay. So I'm painting with gouache, which mm -hmm. I haven't done since I was in college. And mm. I hated it then because like, <laughs> we, they didn't really allow us to work digitally until our final year. And okay, I was yeah. like that digital artist kid who was like, no, don't. <laughs> Don't do this to me. I can't, I can't handle the, the pencils. Um, uh -huh. But now that I'm, you know, I've, I'm out of college, I kind of wish I took advantage of that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, there's no, did you know there's no undo button in, in real life? Huh. I, I, it's, it's so weird. Wow. <laughs> yeah. How and, does that affect the way that you make artwork then? Okay, so what I, I was what I was doing, so I'm making this painting for a gallery show, and what I 
did was I first painted the entire thing digitally um, mm, and then yeah. and then I started painting traditionally so I have like a kind of a base to work off of I guess mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and now that I, I finished the painting and I'm looking at them side by side and I much prefer the digital version just because mm. like you can really control everything because so even though I'm Absolutely. if you've seen my work like it looks I try to mimic the traditional look so like it'll have like a lot of like messy um blotches or edges, marks and, edges yeah. and things mm -hmm. but once you actually do those in real life unintentionally <laughs> it's like no I that's not where I wanted that rough line to be <laughs> I didn't tell you to do that paintbrush <laughs> So yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot of more like unexpected things that yeah. happen, right? Yeah, yeah I, I've sort of been running into the same thing lately because I'm doing the mermaid challenge right oh, now, yeah, and yeah, I I really like to take the monthly challenges as opportunities to do more traditional work, just because I spend so much time on my computer. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> yesterday for a uh, day three's piece, I. Literally halfway through, I just sat back and I was like, what am I doing? I'm like, I was like looking at like the piece in front of me. And I was like, I actually have no idea how I got here. And I was like so lost. And I'm like, uh, I'm not even really sure what to do next. But I was like, well, I can't just stop now. Cause like I was tempted to start an entirely new piece, but mm -hmm. I started feeling really stubborn. I was like, no, I just want to finish this piece. Damn it. And so I just like kept working through it and like, I just continued making mistakes, but I was like, you know what? This is just part of the traditional art process. Like you said, there's no undo button. Mm -hmm. You you make something, you just got to keep working with it. You just got to go. Mm -hmm. And in the end, you know what? It got done, and that is something yeah. that I can be proud of. <laughs> I think there's a lesson to be learned from that, where mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. you got to accept your mistakes and mm -hmm. the things that you cannot control. And because um, like another thing which I hate about traditional art is that you can't color pick your way like you can't I, I have like I'm super picky about my colors so mm -hmm. you could have like two reds who look exactly the same but I'll be like no, yes. no 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 I know this one has the teensy a bit more of a warm tone to it. They yes, are two different yes. colors, my friend. Essentially, um, yes. <laughs> but then I can't create those colors traditionally, you know? And like, mm -hmm. if I paint something one day and I have to, like, retouch it the next day, then I can't get that exact same color again. And it makes me mm. so frustrated. But mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta learn from it. Sometimes you can't, you can't uh, control. You can't uh, get what you want all the time. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, just accept it, buddy. This is kind of a tangent. Yeah, but, but I... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, I, what, what I was about to say is going to be a tangent. Oh, okay. I thought I was yeah, a yeah. tangent. I'm sorry. So um, I, I think that the inconsistency in color in traditional work is often what gives it a lot of its charm, mm. I think. Yeah, and it's something that, like, your brain recognizes as, like, oh, you know, like, that... I don't want to say it's an imperfection because that means that, like, digital artwork is the perfect... That's not true. Mm -hmm. Um... The inconsistency, I should say, is what your brain recognizes as like, oh, it's created by like a human hand and there's like something about that that That's is true. in itself very, you know, nice to look at. And um, I keep wanting to, to say imperfection. Oh my God, I don't know why my brain is like hyper-focused on that word, but just like the differences uh, in texture and color and line weight and stuff when it comes to traditional work is often what digital artwork is trying to mimic, mm -hmm. I find. So um, even though mistakes are a lot of prevalent when it comes to making traditional artwork, it's like there's something very beautiful about that in its own right and... I don't know. I think it that looks good. That made me really sad. I don't know. Wait, it made you sad? Well, not sad. I don't know. It made me kind of emotional for digital art and how beautiful it is. Mm hmm Because I, I know digital art is great, but, like, that, that's the other thing where I'm kind of needed to, like, start painting again, where there's nothing beats making something with your own hands and, like, mm -hmm. having being able to hold that product, you know? Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. It is a very, like physical kind of connection mm -hmm. 
that, that you have like in front of you. And it's like, wow, like this is the thing mm-hmm. that I was like moving around the canvas and you're like mixing these colors. And it's like, you have this very visceral yeah. sort of reaction to it, I think. Yeah, I, I think that's why like when people, that's why art galleries are so popular, mm-hmm. right? You get to like see like the thickness of the paint up close or you get to see like the strokes of the brush. And it's just like, somebody made this like oh oh, oh on another on another tangent have you ever <laughs> seen a piece of art where like you're just so moved by it so like last night I was just walking through like the shops area and then I passed by a coffee shop and they had like a large ink drawing frame I like I passed by outside so like I was just looking inside and it was a large ink drawing of like a dog and I, I just stood there and I looked at it. I was, I loved it so much. And my Aww. dad came by and he was like, oh, you like that? And I'm like, I really like it. I, mm-hmm. I really like this. I can't describe how much I like this drawing of a dog. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, have you ever had, have you ever felt like such a strong connection? Oh God, definitely. Um, I mean, like I can't name a specific piece of artwork right, right now, but... but... Many, many times I've just like come across artwork in <laughs> the physical world. God, that sounds so weird for me to say that. Um, yeah, I've just like come across artwork not on a screen, yeah. and I've just like felt completely mesmerized by it. Whether it's just like the sheer scale of it, mm-hmm. just like how large it is in real life, yeah, or um, seeing all the like just understanding all the different choices that an artist had to make mm-hmm. in order to create that final product. It's like I'm just completely mesmerized by it and um it does kind of take your breath away Mm -hmm. momentarily you you do find yourself a bit lost in it and like (laughs) I know that uh very simplistic artwork maybe like Rothko or like Mondrian's kind of stuff Mm -hmm. people are just sort of like eh it's cubes what's so Mm -hmm. cool about that but it's like if you see it in person you're just like I don't I don't know there's something you feel like a connection to it Mm -hmm. and it's just like very um it's very moving yeah I think the simplicity of it I also find that like with I find more of a connection with people's sketches and their rough work than like finished pieces Mm -hmm. just Mm because I feel like it's a more it's like a very raw version of like their creativity Mm -hmm. um it's like it's purest form where like it's very rough. It's very quick. It's like the the first instance of their. their oh wow! Drawing, yeah. Mhm. Mhm. But yeah, this is a weird tangent, but. Oh no! I, this I is like make, this is like sending shivers up my spine. I like, feel so beautiful <laughs> talking about this. This is so wonderful. Yeah, sort of like just when something is in its almost like truest form, like mm-hmm. the truest form that it can be, right? Because yeah. like the sketch is the idea in the brain onto mm-hmm. the paper. That's like the first iteration, yeah. and it's just like. There she is. <laughs> there, she, there she is. I guess that's why, like, a lot of people prefer, like, another tangent. When, like, you draw something, when you post the sketch and it gets more likes than the finished piece, mm-hmm. that could be why. Yeah. I think maybe we just, like, naturally respond to that sort of unfinished nature of things. Because mm-hmm. it's just, like, you, you understand. I don't know. D- there's just a connection that you feel to it that you can't, like, entirely explain, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever watch um, those pencil tests of animation? Oh, you mean like, uh, it's like the animation, but it's all drawn like frame by frame yeah. in pencil? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a pencil. I, I would love to see a movie just just of that. There's just so much charm and simplicity in those. Mm. Where, ah, oh, man. <laughs> Getting emotional over here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow, yeah, I, I've never thought about that before. Just how like raw that would that would feel. Cause like, of course, it's nice to polish things up and to make them as pretty as they can be. But when you can like see the grain of the pencil and like uh, like the underlying sketch of things, mm-hmm. it's like wow. Like I think you know what what it is. I think you like register just how much work is put into mm-hmm. it. Yeah, and there's something about like the passion and the drive that is needed to create that work that we just like respond Mm -hmm. very well to yeah yeah I think I could Mm -hmm. okay let's let's 
go back to our original topic. <laughs> yeah, we, we're all like three different tangents right now. <laughs> okay, okay. So going back, um, we could talk about what to do uh, in lieu of an art block instead mm-hmm. of just like forcing yourself to draw, like maybe learning something, yeah. a new skill perhaps. Yeah, okay. So... Yeah, so while you are in one of those plateaus where your evaluation eye is like, you suck, why, why, Hans, why are you doing this to me? Um, <laughs> you could take this time to learn. Because, like, I mean, sometimes no matter what you do, the art block is not going away. Like, right, it, it just right. needs a little bit of time. So you could mm-hmm. use this opportunity to um, brush up on your art skills. Mm-hmm. Um, if you feel like, I don't know, you have to improve your skills of anatomy or perspective or like for me personally I cannot draw cars at all Mm. if you've ever seen me draw a car it's like very simplified and you think oh how charming (laughs) it's like a very retro looking car but it's actually because I don't know how to draw one and I'm just like making it as simple as possible so yeah what I should be doing is you know find a um a photo of a car and Mm -hmm. trace it okay actually so i've seen like people do this before where um they'll draw something without reference yes Mm -hmm. and then they'll either trace that like let's say for example a car they'll trace that Mm -hmm. car or they'll have the car as reference and they'll draw like looking at that and then they'll get rid of the photo they'll get rid of the Mm -hmm. reference and then they'll try to draw again and you can't compare the improvement of like that first drawing without reference to the one after and you'll mm. see like whoa i have learned so much within this first drawing ah i think that sort of like can can help motivate yourself mm-hmm. too where you're like hey i can learn things i yeah. can do better mm-hmm. <laughs> not all is lost not, all is not lost so no. i mean yeah so besides like um self-learning you know like your mm-hmm. these little skills like that you could also uh like how you said that like you're painting traditionally so you could uh take the time to try out a different yes, like working yes. with pastels or pencils or even like keep the same medium but like try out a different style mm-hmm. ah, yes, yes. Uh, if you want to go the extra mile you could take a class and learn something new learning a new mm-hmm. skill i feel like also helps you out in the long run because let's say mm-hmm. for example you learn how to sew or do pottery or a garden or something you can kind of incorporate like once you've learned that skill you can kind of incorporate that into your drawing because mm-hmm. that comes back to how your you when you're drawing you kind of need inspiration from the outside world so that is the outside world and you can kind mm-hmm. of bring that stuff in so your new drawings could have like you could kind of incorporate some of your embroidery skills or your newfound love of bird watching or something Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah yeah no I I've definitely like been experiencing that a lot in my personal life too mm -hmm. because like personally I think when I get very comfortable in a certain medium or like I am know that I can just like make art with that then I almost feel like I don't have to learn anything new Mm -hmm. but when I do learn something new or like I have a new experience I really find that that just like reinvigorates me in a very kind of new way like recently I went to a botanic garden in Santa Barbara and it was just like oh it was it was actually a life-changing experience to be quite honest yeah and just like seeing fields of poppies like against this backdrop of like an enormous mountain on the blue skies and like standing amongst all these tall redwood trees like you just feel I don't know I don't want to use the word insignificant but you just feel like the weight of Mm -hmm. everything that has come before you essentially and I have definitely lost the original point that I was going to make but that's perfectly (laughs) fine I'm gonna keep going I don't know that just changed me in a new kind of way and I think it helped me approach art making in just like with a different perspective Mm -hmm. essentially yeah okay yeah that's definitely definitely something that you could try doing go to a botanical garden and feel (laughs) how tiny you are in the grand scheme of things it it does you good I think (laughs) (laughs) do you feel like you've learned or would like to learn a new skill like this or something in particular I mean I'm really interested in 
a garden gardening. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really bad at it right now. <laughs> <laughs> the, really, the only thing I can take care of are succul- succulents, but they mm-hmm. do most of the work on their own. But I would really like to get better at gardening and understand how like plant cycles work and like how to grow your own food like that's such a difficult thing to do Mm -hmm. and I feel like I underestimate it all the time just because like it's so easy to go to the grocery store and just have like a plethora of options available to you and like your brain doesn't make the connection that like oh somebody had to make all of this and it's like okay well then how and it's like well there's a lot of steps and knowledge and Mm -hmm. skill involved in doing that so like I think learning that would really sort of like humble me once again and, and like teach me that like there are many parts in my life where I am still a beginner and that is a wonderful thing that Mm -hmm. I can keep learning right right yeah yeah I think I've seen a lot of people like take up pottery recently and ceramics Mm -hmm. and I feel like that would be really fun um just because like um I can see you making really cute ceramic stuff I'm ready to leave behind the world of the two dimensions <laughs> and ah, yes. kind of like evolve onto a new plane of existence and that is like <laughs> like like making 3d stuff i guess uh-huh, um, uh-huh. or like okay uh, have you ever seen people make little felt animals i have they are really cute. so cute i think your style would suit that stuff really really nicely to but be can honest can you imagine how much like i feel like that takes a really long time i for it <laughs> That that's why you have stuck to traditional mm-hmm. for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> the instantaneous <laughs> nature of it, yes. But I maybe um do, doing those things would uh like introduce a new rhythm into your yeah, life almost. I feel uh, yeah. Like, yeah. It could be very, very beneficial, mm-hmm. I can see. And probably just like fun, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the problem that some people have, including myself, is also an issue with time. Okay, where yeah. I mean, sometimes you have this art block, and you think, okay, I wanna, I wanna try out new things, or I, I just wanna draw, period. But you just don't have time for it. Um, right, right. And whether that be because you're too busy with school or work, or you have a art job like me, mm-hmm. but that can, that means you can't like draw for yourself. Yes, yes. Then it's like, when am I ever gonna find time to do this? Mm-hmm. That's that was my only point. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Have you found any sort of workarounds to that, or are you posing a question? <laughs> um, neither. I feel like I, I'm. Yeah, I think I'm just. The like, point. Okay. It's just a point. Um, the point. Yeah, I think that like. When you have a very busy schedule, of course, it's difficult to find time to do things, but I think. More importantly than that, it's about making time, mm-hmm. almost. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's that quote, that really popular quote? It's like, Beyonce has the same 24 hours in the day that anybody else does. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. That is very true. And it's like, of course, Beyonce has a massive team of people helping her do what she needs to do. But mm-hmm. at the same time, she puts in a lot of work herself. Yeah. I mean, like look at the performances that she puts on, right? Like, that's mm-hmm. that's her. Mm-hmm. That's her just up there doing that work. And so I guess if Beyonce can make time, mm-hmm. then we can too, us mere mortals, <laughs> can also make the time to mm-hmm. do the things that we yeah. want to do. Because mm-hmm. um, I know I do feel this way where, like, okay, back when I was in college, I... Mm-hmm had all the time in the world because I went to a European school which did not believe in homework so I I had plenty of free time Mm -hmm. those damn Europeans so (laughs) uh so I was one of those people who would be posting a drawing every day I was one of those nasty people one of those people (laughs) okay now that I have a full-time job I envy those people and I think like I I if you've seen my social media, you've probably seen that I haven't posted anything in like probably months. And I feel really sad about that because I just feel like I haven't had time to draw for myself. But sometimes life gets in the way. And um, you, I, as always, don't compare yourself to other people, blah, 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 blah. You've heard us say this a million times, but that's because it's, it's inevitable. true. Um, so even though I haven't had time for myself to be able to draw every single day, 
what you can do is set some time where doesn't it have to be every day it could be like let's on saturday morning for one hour mm -hmm. you are gonna try to sit down and you're gonna sit down and force yourself to draw mm -hmm. uh, so and it doesn't you don't have to make anything good i think that's the other thing that people feel when they're in art block where it's like mm -hmm. i everything i'm drawing just is not working like i keep starting something and it just it's not working out and i keep restarting um sometimes you just have to stick with it mm -hmm. and kind of like push through until because eventually something is gonna come out of it mm -hmm. um and so yeah so like when you make the time off for yourself don't feel pressure to make like an amazing drawing just try to get a something just anything you know right right oh my god this is so crazy my my partner and i were actually just talking about this literal subject mm -hmm. yesterday oh um because he was telling me like uh you know like when i sit down to make music and it like doesn't turn out the way that i want it to like mm -hmm. my first instinct is to just like give up on it and just start yeah. something else um but he had watched this interview with the musician muramasa and he was essentially talking about the same thing oh. he was like he was saying like yeah um a lot of the times i sit down and I make a lot of shit. It's mm -hmm. just, I don't like it. I'm not happy with it. It's bad. But he then went on to say that, like, I now realize that I have to make those bad things in order to get to the good stuff. Because, yeah. like, think about it like this. Probability-wise, not everything that you're going to make is going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. It's going to be perfect. It's going to be good. You're going to make a lot of bad stuff. But in order to get to the good stuff, you have to make that bad stuff. Yeah. It just, like, it has to happen, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that, like, having that understanding can, like, really mitigate the, I don't know, the disappointment that you may feel yeah. when you, like, sit down and you make stuff that you're just not happy with, as long as you understand, like, hey, this is just part of the process, then you can just, like, keep moving forward, right? Mm -hmm. Like, this isn't good, this isn't good, this isn't good, but that's mm -hmm. okay, because, like, eventually I will get to the thing that is good, yeah. and, like, that is, that work will be worth it, basically. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And um, in terms of, like, trying to force yourself to draw, and, like, Obviously, you don't have to do this, but right. <laughs> this is this is something that has worked for me personally. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. again, because I have I draw for a living. Like even if I have art block, that mm -hmm. my clients don't care. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you think they care if I if like oh boo hoo I can't Excuse I can't me. draw I can't draw today? No, they don't care. So <laughs> I have to keep pushing forward and. Because, like, I'm getting paid for it and because, like, my clients are counting on me, I push through it and force myself to make work. Mm -hmm. So when I'm drawing for myself, I kind of put myself into the same mindset of, like, I pretend that this is work and mm. um, this, maybe this isn't the best thing to do, but it okay. works oh, for yeah. me. Yes, yes. And mm -hmm. uh, just treating it kind of like uh, something you have to do Well, mm -hmm. kind of, like, put me in that mindset and I will push forward and eventually I will create a drawing and then I can relax. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Probably Vicky, you don't do the same thing that I do. What do you do? Actually, I was just about to say that like, I go through periods where I do just that. Mm -hmm. And I also go through periods, which is something I'm going through right now of like, just and it's not that big a deal. Like, yeah. It's not that serious, you know? It's oh, yeah. like, it's, it's just making artwork and like, um, there's no need to take every single piece so seriously mm -hmm. and like put such immense pressure on yourself for uh, everything to turn out perfectly. Like lately, and this kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier, but I've just been like, you know, taking around a piece of paper with me wherever I go and just like drawing stuff that comes to mind. And um, yeah, like a lot of it looks really terrible, but I'm honestly okay with that mm -hmm. right now. It's just like, yeah, it looks bad, but like, I mean, at least I'm doing something. And like, mm -hmm. I think that feeling of having done something yeah. is a very powerful motivator for me mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, like I'm capable of, you know, putting things down on paper and like, it just enforces this trust that I have with myself. It's like, okay, if I can do this, then I can like make other pieces of artwork and like it doesn't like keep me in a like a state or like a trough of like um feeling unsure or like feeling confused about mm -hmm. like what I'm going yeah. to do next it's just kind of like you know just 
just draw. If it looks bad, who cares? Yeah. Who cares? That's, I think, like, that's that is the a good main point. thing. Yeah, that I'm telling myself. It's like... You shouldn't it's... feel pressured to draw. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I had an idea. So, if you do want to go with this easy, breezy art block way, um, I think it could be a good idea to, like, have a drawing thing with your pals where you go to a cafe and like sit and just draw together and so if you make it into like a very casual and fun environment you kind of lose Mm -hmm. that pressure I suppose Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it becomes more fun because I think that's the other thing when like you have art block like drawing just does not seem like fun anymore oh yeah yeah yeah. uh, you kind of like lose interest in it or like you feel you know Mm -hmm. so Doing it with your pals kind mm-hmm. of makes it a bit more entertaining. Just a Gosh, suggestion. That does sound fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd really like to do that someday. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a really nice idea. Have Have you ever done that before, where you just like draw with friends? Yes. Um. Mm. So I don't have any art friends where I live currently. But mm-hmm. when when I do when I lived in Toronto and like when I do get to visit, then I would do that kind of stuff where like Mm -hmm. we'll sit at a cafe together and we'll just talk and maybe we'll do some sketching and it's very lighthearted and it's very easy breezy Mm -hmm. Um, and like there's no goal to be like okay hey guys let's all create something by the end of this two hours Mm -hmm. it's Mm -hmm. no it's uh it's just like a fun chill thing god that sounds nice Mm -hmm. yeah that's a really good idea actually that's a good idea Mm -hmm. um so yeah, I guess you could go either route of either like forcing yourself <laughs> and making it feel like work or be chill. Whatever yeah. works best. You, you try both out. And... Exactly. I think that's perfect advice. Just do what you will and see what works yeah. for you. <laughs> um, I think, okay, I, I think I'll have one more point enough, unless you have Sure, one. okay. So yeah, yeah. some other things that you can do. I know you mentioned earlier that you're doing mermaid. Yeah, yeah. Which is... Uh, you draw a mermaid every day for the month of May. So mm-hmm. um, doing challenges like these is kind of like um, a low-key version of giving yourself work where mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's you kind of give yourself a goal and a set period to do things by. So either it could be something like the character design challenge group on Facebook or doing an artist prompt. And I have, like, besides Mermaid, you have Inktober, but you also have ones where people create themselves where it's like every day is a different subject, Mm -hmm. you know, and you kind of are given that inspiration or, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You are given a starting point to bounce off of, and hopefully yeah, you, yeah. Will try to, you will find something to draw using that word mm-hmm. or topic or, you know. And then you're also given that deadline. So if you feel like you want to try an easy, a mildly easy, breezy version of that forcing yourself to work, mm-hmm. then try one of those challenges. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a really good idea. Because it, like, gives you that starting point, like you mm-hmm. said, and it takes um, a large part of that guesswork out mm-hmm. for you yeah. just eliminates that and like you can just get started essentially mm-hmm. yeah because mm-hmm. like there are a lot of times where i was like oh i don't know what to draw tell me what to draw and then people mm-hmm. would be like oh draw this draw that and i'll be like no something else <laughs> <laughs> I, don't... I feel that yeah, yeah. but yeah. if you have like a prompt list which tells you no you have to draw this and only this then mm-hmm. y- you kind of have to mm-hmm. and it works you you don't have that wiggle room which is sometimes for the best Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just, like, employing some constraints on yourself can Mm. really just, like, help you focus on what's important. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. definitely. Because, okay, there's this this thing I read where it's art block is not uh, a limit of inspiration. It is a Mm -hmm. limit of your creativity or... Okay. Okay. No, I forgot, I forgot. But it's basically... (laughs) (laughs) But the... What it basically is, is that there's no, you haven't run out of inspiration. It's all still yes. there. You just got, got to kind of like hone it in a little bit. And like having mm. a little bit of constraints and giving yourself like just one area. Because sometimes you can feel so overwhelmed. Like, yeah, what, yeah. where do I even start? Yeah, absolutely. So, yes. Um, Good practice. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and sometimes you might find a muse of some sort. I know oh, I had a phase where I, literally all I drew was mermaid. Back before this mermaid thing was a thing, I, I yes. was, yeah, I had like a phase where I was only drawing mermaids. And then I had a phase where I was only using purple, and I had a phase where I was only drawing long hair, or like I was really into mm-hmm. Victorian stuff. So mm. 
this is not really related to art blog, but it was just something I wanted to say that it, it's kind of funny where sometimes you uh, kind of get stuck on one thing that you keep wanting, wanting to draw over and over. I think it is applicable because we were just talking about constraints, right? Mm -hmm. And like having something, a very specific thing that you draw over and over yeah. again, that's like a constraint in its yeah. own way. Mm -hmm. oh, that's true. That's true. It could be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we've used up all of our points. Do you have anything yeah. else to say? No, I think we can move on to the uh, the faves, the yes. faves that we have. Let's Yay. talk about that. All right, Vicky, what is your fave of the week? My fave of the week is this little thing on Netflix called Chef's Table. Oh. It is, I'm shooketh, um, it is <laughs> beautifully filmed. Uh, Cinematography-wise, it is just absolutely stunning. And essentially what it does is it follows, each episode focuses on a specific chef and the type of food that they make, their story, you know, what got them into making food and, like, how they implement their life experience into what they do and just, mm -hmm. like, how they've evolved with their craft, essentially. Mm -hmm. And it's super interesting. They have, like, a very wide range of chefs that they interview. Like, there's this one that I found very interesting of this, I believe it's a Buddhist uh, monk from South Korea, Mm -hmm. And she just, like, talks about how simplicity is what makes her dishes beautiful and, like, why that matters to her and, like, all that sort of stuff. And then on the other end of that, you have, like, pastry chefs from France and, you know, talking about their kind of thing. And it's just really fascinating and it plays into what we were talking about earlier of just, like, finding inspiration outside of, you know, like... Mm -hmm what you do essentially and just like learning about other people's stories and experiences and it's just I highly recommend that people watch it it's the second season just came out yeah. right oh, I swear they have like four seasons oh right okay now. my bad my <laughs> there's there's a lot of good content okay. on there yeah all yes. right <laughs> that sounds really cool I I gotta say that like ever since I finished Great British Bake Off, it's like mm -hmm. every I we me and my sisters have been trying to find another cooking show to watch, and nothing compares. We we always keep comparing mm -hmm. it to Great British Bake Off, and we'll be like, Ugh, Paul and Mary wouldn't. I understand because that show is literally perfect. Honestly. honestly. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, I'll try a Chef's Table just because it's not a competitive cooking show and it's a uh, it's yeah, a documentary, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Please check it out. It's really okay. good. Yeah. Okay, so my fave of the week is a book which I purchased very recently. Uh, it's called Draw Stronger, Self-Care for Cartoons and Visual Artists. And it is by Creota Wilberg. And it is a really good book so far. It's hmm. kind of... Um, it basically teaches artists and basically anyone who has a desk job on kind of how to... Be healthy in the way you work so mm -hmm. in in the sense of like your posture and like preventing um mm. like bad backs and wrist pain and mm -hmm. uh the kind of exercises you should do and how to like it's and it's really good and it's been it's completely illustrated so it's kind of like a comic book oh. format um so it's very mm -hmm. easy to read it's very easy to understand and it has a lot of i've learned a lot so far because um, wow, wow. I mean we've talked about this before like you you only got one body and if you can't draw mm -hmm. that would be really horrible so mm -hmm. uh prevention is the best thing um yeah and you got to take care of yourself the way you draw and um I mean Vicky are you sitting up straight are you I am now okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah Jeez, there's yeah. yeah there's so many times where like I don't know if it's a chair that I'm using or what, but, like, I mm -hmm. sit in a very weird position where, like, mm. both of my feet are up and they're kind of crossed and I'm leaning to one Ooh. side and it's, mm. it's not good. It's definitely not good for me. So, it's literally what I do, too. Yeah, so... I, I, I often look like a gargoyle at my desk. <laughs> I, I literally much. look like a gargoyle right now. Yeah, it's, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I would highly recommend this book for anyone who feels mm -hmm. like... For any cartoonist slash visual artist, um, I got it online. And mm -hmm. I, if you just Google Draw Stronger, you'll probably find it. It's very good so far. And yeah, I I think it's a good buy. I'd love to check that out. And especially when you mentioned that it's like all illustrated, yes. like that just sounds like a really fun read mm -hmm. and like learning a lot of really useful skills. Yeah. If it was all text, I would never read it. Right, right. <laughs> it's kind of like, oh, boring. 
Yeah. <laughs> Especially because like they use like a lot of like difficult words, not not difficult yeah. words, but like a lot of like uh, academic s- academic sort of. terminology yeah. about your your bones and muscles. <laughs> your bones. <laughs> no, seriously, they have like all of these because like they're talking a lot about like physical therapy and uh-huh. how the body works. So I, yeah. if it was all text, I would feel like I'm in biology class again in high school, and I would just never pick it up. But it's got pictures. Mm-hmm. And it's pictures colored. are fun. It's, yeah, pictures are fun. And it's colored. What? Yeah. Oh man, that's a good time. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of funny too. So, <laughs> yes, this is a. I'm really glad someone had the idea to make this because it was very, it was much needed. Um, it's very accessible. It sounds like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, that is my fave. Um, oh, we got some good faves this mm-hmm. week. I'm, I'm interested in both of these things. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have anything else you want to add, or are we done? So. Uh, other than to just do your thing. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's yeah, like you guys keep keep doing you. Um, mm-hmm. maybe drink some lemonade this afternoon. I think the weather's nice. Oh, that, that sounds pleasant. Yeah, I like that. Doesn't that sound nice? Maybe even put put some mint in there. Be be fancy, you know. Hmm. Even a, maybe a sangria, perhaps. Oh, that would be oh, wow. for our adult listeners. <laughs> Enjoy yourselves. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right. So, thank you very much for joining us and have a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you for listening to The Art Corner. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at The Art Corner Pod or send us any questions or comments at theartcornerpodcast at gmail.com. You can find all of our episodes on workbook.com slash artcorner. Our theme music was made by the amazing Louis Zong and you can follow him at Everyday Louis. Thank you to our social media manager, Megan Stump. You can follow her on Instagram at Megan T. Stump. You can also follow Nusha on Twitter at Foxville underscore art and follow Vicky at Vicky Sai. Please review and subscribe to our podcast. We'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks again and see you next time.